Well, good morning, everyone. We do want to welcome you all here in our 9 a.m. service. And uh, again, as uh, Pastor Johnson emphasized, we do want to thank you all for partnering to World Missions. I don't think we will be the kind of church that God has called if not for World Missions. So part po na ginagawa natin, as we always say, we're not just a local church. We are a global church. And whatever happens in Hong Kong, it's because of your investment. And we want to say thank you for investing and partnering to World Missions. Amen? Also, uh, last Sunday po, nag-declare po tayo na, you know, uh, we want to postpone coming here uh, in our service because of Paeng. Hindi ko alam, talagang masyadong nagalit yata si Paeng. Ano? At uh, sa totoo lang po, di ba, especially those who are living in a low uh, areas like in Kainta where I, uh, I reside. Uh, it so happened, I was in Cebu last week because of the Alab Conference. But nevertheless, may mga naapektuhan din po tayo. Pero meron po bang ano, okay lang po ba magtanong sa inyo? Sino po sa atin dito na nabaha? Nabaha po kayo? Okay. Nabaha po kayo? Ayun, okay. We just want to let you know here in Pasig, uh, it's, it's automatic. Di ba? There are places where the moment that the rain pours, wala tayong magawa. Talagang nagbumabaha po sa atin. At ito po lang yung gusto namin sabihin, if there's anything you like the church to help you, all right? Like, kung nabaha kayo, tapos may nangyari po, please let us know. We would like to help you. In fact, sa Metro East po, kung saan po ako galing, sa Marikinas at sa, sa Pasig po, yung uh, boundary po doon. Automatic po yun, kaya alam mo, ang dami po namin ginawa, bumili kami ng mga inflated boats in case, kasi nga doon nagkaundoy, Ako lang po yung pastor na hinahanap na hindi po ako malocate kasi nga nandun po ako doon sa kalilipat ko lang sa Vista Verde na Isla Verde yung village namin. So they were all looking for me. So, nasa na si Pastor Mark. So yun nga. So talagang it took two days for me to be located. Okay? Talagang sumulong sila sa ba para makita lang ako. So buhay. Buhay po ako. Okay? So iniisip lamang po namin sitwasyon natin. You know, may mga contingency plans po tayo sa Marikina. At if there's anything that happens there, we all know, okay, ito yung game plan one natin, two, three. So, yeah, please let us know, all right? If there's, you need finances, you, there's any assistance, the church will be there for you. In fact, the provinces, we've been sending out help. We've been sending out our support and our, you know, our help for, for those people, especially yung mga churches po natin. Okay lang po ba yun? Please, okay, this is what a church is about. We're here to help, Okay. And because of that, all right, last Sunday, we started with uh, a new series. It's really an open uh, series for all of us that we felt like it's important for us to zero in to God's heart as we started the whole series on abide, that we abide in God's Word. At the same time, Jesus says, abide in my love. And Pastor Anthony did preach a powerful message. How many of you appreciate Pastor Anthony? Pastor Anthony, thank you for that message. And uh, he said that, uh, you know, we can genuinely love one another because of the love of Christ. And that's true. I mean, we don't have the capacity to love. It all depends on our experience of receiving God's love. And therefore, because we receive God's love through the gospel of Jesus Christ, then we could love, then we could forgive, then we could accept Okay, there's unconditional love no matter what. Why? Because that's the way Jesus has loved us. Amen? Can we all stand in our feet today as we continue on in our second week of this series? Let me read to you John chapter 15. John chapter 15, starting in verse 10 to 17. It says here, If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no, no one than this, that someone Lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants. For the servant does not know what his master is doing. 
But I have called you friends for all that I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you so that you will love one another. This is the word of the Lord for us. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you that the reason why we're here, the reason why we're alive, the reason, Lord God, that we exist is simply because you have chosen us. You chose to love us. And Lord, you did not think of our frailties, our shortcomings. All of us doesn't deserve this kind of love. But you've accepted us. You went to that cross for you to demonstrate this kind of love. Lord, may we understand this love and may we abide in your love so that we may be able to love others as well. And this we ask in your name we pray and everyone would say, Amen. Please take your seats. As we start this message, can I ask a question? Can I hear your comments? We just want to uh, just hear from you. Is that okay? Para at least lang, hindi lang yung pag Sunday, ako lang yung naririnig. And in fact, I'd like to, you know, just thank si uh, Melfred. Melfred is our upcoming campus missionary. And uh, thank you, Melfred, for, uh, for sharing. And uh, that was really powerful. And so we would like to ask you a question, okay? Kumbaga, first thing that comes to your mind, what is it that you like and love about the church? Is that okay? Pastor Anthony, sige, okay lang. Uh, we're gonna, wala na pong mag-volunteer, i-volunteer namin kayo. Pastor Anthony, mamili ka. What is one thing or something that you like and love about the church? Go ahead. No, Francis. Francis, okay. Ayan. Ayan. Francis, can you stand up? Ayan. Sorry po, ano, Excuse me, sorry. Are you a single guy? You're married? What? Single. Single. single How old are you, Francis? 28. 20? 28. 28. You don't look like 28, ah. <laughs> so, bago ba yung uh, hair color mo? Uh, natural? Natural. Joke ni po. Wow, okay. Oh, sige. <laughs> Answer the question. What is, what is that thing that you like and love about the church? Um, I love about the church when I meet friends and it became part of my family as well. Friends, relationship comes. Wow, thank you. So you have friends here in this, in the spiritual community, natin. Okay, so yeah, my friend. Babae po. Bahala ka. Okay, ako mamimili. Hello, bro. Ikaw ang napili. Hello po. Good What's morning. your name? Joshua po. Joshua. You're alone, Joshua. Girl, lo magisa. Yes, po, because I'm starting to uh, continue my spiritual journey in victory. Oh, good. Okay. So, okay, can you answer the question? Um, one, the thing I like about the church is the fellowship, because that's one thing the Lord has been um, uh, telling us that we must not give up seeing each other and bring one another. Wow. Okay. Wow. Fellowship, not give up meeting together. Thank you. So, okay, we let's. Uh, hear one more person over there. Okay, dito naman, dito. Dito. Let's hear from a woman. Okay, dito. What's your name? <laughs> Angela. Angelica po. Angelica. Okay. How old are you, Angelica? Uh, 22 po. 22, okay. Uh, what I like about the church is we can talk about life po. Life. Talk yeah. about life. Wow. So you don't have any hesitation to talk about and share about yourself. Okay. Wow, great. Thank you so much. Well, let's shift a bit and change the question. What is it that you don't like about the church naman? Okay lang po ba yun? So una, ano ba? Positive tayo. Ano ba yung you don't like about the church? Okay lang naman. Kasi di ba pag church po, wala naman perfecto eh, di ba? Di ba, hindi naman tayo perfect. May mga ano rin tayo. Kailangan natin yung God is in the business of perfecting us. There's no such thing as perfect. So what is the thing that you don't like about the church? Belfred, nasaan ka? Di kita makita. Ayun. Sige, ma'am. Good morning. 
Good morning. Um, Can I know your name first? Olive. Olive. I always, we always come here as a family. So first, let me share what I like about the church. It's a sense of belonging. Okay. It's because uh, in our Christian life, even if we have a family within, we want to feel that we have a family in the Christian community. So that's okay. what I like about the church. What I don't like about the church, um, there's really nothing that I don't like. I just don't like it when it's becoming too long, yung service. Okay. Yon. Okay. At saka, <laughs> at saka what, what I don't like, sabi din ng anak ko, matagal. Yeah. <laughs> matagal daw. That's just it. Sige. Pwede pong malaman, sino po yung nagpipreach na matagal para pwede natin pag-usapan niya, di ba? <laughs> o, Pastor Anthony, o, mga, mga pastors natin, okay? So, thank you. You know, we, uh, we received that. And yeah, thank you na yung anak nyo. Ano ba yung matagal sa inyo? <laughs> hindi kayo po, hindi anak nyo, okay? Anak nyo, magkakaroon po tayo ng kids shorts sa lahat ng ages. Pine-prepare po natin yan. Kaya for now, it's okay to bring your kids with you. Is that okay? Yeah, so thank you po, Olive. Pastor Anthony, sino na pili mo? Oh, dito, dito, dito. Let's hear naman from this. Pili ka na, dali. Okay. Kayo naman po. Hi. Um, siguro isa yung... Can I know your name first? I'm Deck. Deck, Deck? Deck, yeah. Deck, okay. I'm with my wife. Good. Yeah. Siguro one thing I don't like about the church currently is yung um, hindi siya participative sa social or sa community um what do you call it? yung siguro let's let's be honest yung political um environment ng ng country natin mm. sometimes the church play safe and and detach themselves on on social mm. um situation so what you're saying the church needs to be involved yes. and participative in political process well basically uh, stand more on the side of truth and be bo- vocal about it and yeah. you know make them make their uh, participations uh, known and felt heard okay very good i like that thank you okay we're taking note of that all right so are you referring to us as a whole, okay. I just want to make sure, ah, huh? oh, because you know we, we we do have some things to say regarding that, and it's very sensitive. And so, uh, yeah, with the recent, uh, anything about politics, it could be divided, and it's been an historical fact, okay, for the churches sometimes to go through that. And yeah, thank you. All right, one last. Dito po. Hello, bro. Good morning. Uh, what I like about the church first, because it has okay. to be balanced, okay. um, is that when the worship team brings us to the throne room of God but through the worship, yeah. um, what I don't like is when the, the worship leader screams and not sing. So it... <laughs> It's kind of distracting. So, although this is very, very, very analang naman yeah. minor, but it's a feedback that I think you can consider. Good. Because we're here to worship the Lord, and we all want to be brought to the throne room of God's grace. Wow, thank you. I like that. All right, thank you so much. Palakpakan po natin yung mga nag-participate today. Wow, thank you. All right, you know... Uh, it's important to give also, to, to hear from you, no? And uh, we never expect that it's going to be like this. You know, the church is not perfect, all right? From the very beginning, God chose people who are sinners, not capable of loving. But yet, God chose us because there's something about that God wants to bring in our own lives. And that's why it is essential to know about the gospel. As we continue on, understanding of God's love. Verse 15, on its first part, it says here, No longer do I call you servants. 
For the servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. It's important for us to understand Jewish culture where a servant will always remain to be a servant. In fact, the word servant means bond servant, which is equivalent to slave. That's why in the Jewish culture, there is Lord, there is a slave. And it's part of their culture that they would buy slaves to be part of their household so that they'll treat them as helpers. At least in our context, parang ganun din po, kaya nga, di ba, we elevate it and yung sinatawag po natin kasambahay. That is part of the job. But reality is, a servant will always remain a servant. And there is no business for a slave, whatever it takes, whatever the situation is, to get involved in the affairs of the master. I want you to understand, Jesus break that kind of relationship. Because of his love for us, he pointed out this kind of picture of a slave to a master. And because of his love, Jesus elevated our relationship from servants to friends. He said, I don't call you anymore as servants. I call you as friends. There is no way in the good Jewish culture would able to bring and change the way the slaves will or uh, treat the slaves. It's always a big division. But Jesus elevated our relationship from servants to friends. Now, Jesus is not with us. He relates to his disciples, him being the master and disciples. Now, here's the point. What about us? How can we relate to this when Jesus is not around us? My friends, by the Spirit of God, by the Word of God, by the church community, we can adopt this relationship because it was Jesus who paved the way and whatever he started there and whatever nationality or culture, God can bring forth this kind of love. Can you say amen? Jesus will never treat you as slaves. It's always on the basis of a relationship between friends. Because we are now friends with Jesus. What are the implications having a friend relationship with Jesus? Three outcomes of a friend relationship with Jesus. Very quickly, number one, Jesus revealed his Father to us. It says in the last part, of verse 15, but I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you. Because of his love for us, my friends, Jesus would not withhold anything with us based on who the Father is. He would present his dad to the people. Why? Because he's the one who mediates between God the Father and the people. And it's important for us to understand this. He did it on the basis of love. There is no business a slave can have with this master, but Jesus stooped down in our level to engage us, to engage you with this word, by the Spirit of God, by the church community with that mission, so that you will understand and receive the love of God. Is that amazing? Jesus has treated us as friends. And even in our context, we are very maternal, di ba? Dito sa Pilipinas. Uh, for some, because of our religiosity, we have raised that kind of culture that we are a maternal kind of society. But in the Jewish culture, it's all about the Father. And Jesus would relate to them by giving them the Father. He would tell them stories and sharing the things about the heart of his Father. Why? Because Jesus was breaking that kind of relationship from servants to friends. I was looking for a friend, and he's here, Pastor Jonathan. 
Pastor Jonathan and I had a, you know, had such a great relationship when we were still in New Belt. And by way of giving him this illustration, kasi nakita ko po sa, sa kultura natin, no? kung talagang totoong kaibigan yan, ang gagawin po natin, di ba? Pag pinakilala ka sa pamilya at lalo na sa parents mo, para masasabi mo, uy, grabe, importante ako dito sa taong to, pinakilala ako. Kaya kayong mga, yung babae, pag, pag kinocourt nyo, hindi pa kayo pinapakilala. Okay, sa, sa pamilya, lalo na sa parents, eh, nako, baliwala ka lang. Pastor Jonathan, I remember, would introduce me to his family. And the first time that I was introduced, we went to Kalaokan, his place. Grabe, si Mami, si Mami Tessie, talagang paghahanda ng pagkain niya. Ako, namimiss, namiss ko tuloy yung kare-kare ni Mami Tessie, di ba, Pastor Jonathan? Pag si, pa, si Mami Tessie, talaga, welcome na mga We become really close. I was uh, Pastor Jonathan's best man, okay lang ba yun? So, dahil kasi meron kaming R&R. Meron siyang Riza, meron na Rizel. Okay, <laughs> totoo yan, di ba? Tabuo yun sa rasa eh. Okay, may rasa, rasa with love yan. <laughs> but we're really friends. And I remember when he got married, he went to the U.S., he visited my family. And my dad, okay? Dati ko first time ko nakita, my dad would tease Pastor Jonathan. Kasi nag, <laughs> nag honeymoon eh. So yung dad ko parang, Oh, no, I'm stunned. You know, how was si John? Wow! Di ba, para si John? Ikaw talaga, daddy. So, there was really closeness within our family. And we could say, man, we're friends. Wherever we go, we remain and keep that friendship. Kaya naman nung nag-court siya kay Miss Risa. Si Miss Risa, same age pala kami ni Miss Risa, no? Tama ba yan? O matanda ka lang na kundi sa akin, Miss Risa, no? But the barriers... You know, whatever age that is, when it comes to love, diba, there's acceptance, there's joy, and all that. What are we saying here? That's what Jesus did for us. Jesus has introduced His Father to us because He wanted to share everything that He has for us. And we don't deserve that. Who are we as slaves? Who are we as Gentile people? who never is really part of the promise of Israel, and yet, Jesus broke that barrier for us to experience this kind of love. In verse 13, greater love is no one than this, that someone laid down his life for his friends. The word lay down his life means to die voluntarily. It means to die willingly. And the greatness of love, or the highest peak of this love, has been demonstrated by Jesus when He gave His life for us, which is self-sacrifice. When Jesus mentioned this, greater love has no one than this, that someone laid down his life for his friends. He was declaring what He's about to do and demonstrate this kind of statement that literally he will sacrifice himself. He will suffer just like a lamb for the purpose of sacrificing and give the offering to God. And that's what he did for us. Jesus declared this kind of love that he demonstrated. In fact, I just want to let you know, when he said this, Jesus has never gone to the cross, but he said it prophetically. I will lay down my life for you. You're no longer servants, but you're friends. What a picture. Jesus elevated our situation, our relationship from servants to friends. Secondly, Jesus chose and appointed us to go and bear fruit that will last. Verse 16, you did not choose me. But I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide. First things first, we were chosen. You were handpicked. The Word of God says you were chosen 
before the foundations of the earth. Can you imagine upon God's sovereign wisdom and power, God knew that this time will come and it has never changed. He chose us. He knew what's going to happen, that this pandemic will arrive, and the way Jesus would relate to us has never changed. Jesus still chooses you, no matter what. That's huge. That's one of the revelations that blew my mind away. But little Lord, I don't have to strive. I don't have to do, I don't have to perform in order for me to get your attention. Because that's what religion does. For you to get right with God, there are things that you need to do. If you don't do this and that, then you don't please God. Christianity is the other way around. Jesus paved the way for us. He chose you that we're going to get saved so that we will experience his love. Now, here's the point. He has chosen you. But do you choose him? A lot of people still doesn't choose God. To the fact that God has given everything, people still choose what the world will offer them. Have you chosen the will of God? That song that we sang, it's huge. It's about the purpose of God. And we still choose the ways of the world. We choose something that is more than what God has for us. God has chosen you. Would you choose God? We were not just chosen. We were appointed. We were appointed to go. I begin to realize that my appointment is not something with my position. My appointment has something to do with what God wants to fulfill to other people when he said, I appointed you to go. That's why missions plays an important role in our lives. Why? Because the church has to go out. Hello. Can you imagine if we did not send out missionaries and reach out to the guy who became a pastor in Hong Kong? Can you imagine if we're just going to stick it out here in this very place in Metro Manila, not thinking of the world? I don't think that's what God's purpose is for us. We were appointed to go and bear fruit. In other words, my friends, whether you like it or not, you're meant to be fruitful. There is no Christian, there is no believer that we would say that's unproductive, that is unfruitful. Well, if, if you choose to be one, but God has appointed you to go and bear fruit. The original meaning of the word fruit here means to cause results to exist. In other words, I exist as part of my destiny, as part of our destiny, is to cause results, is to produce results. That's what it is. We're here to advance the kingdom of God. We're here to say and declare we're about the purpose of God. It's not about us. It will never be about us. It's about God and His purpose in our lives that what He wants to do, I'm in it. And that's the business of the church. It's to share and extend this kind of love. When you say produce, what kind of fruit are we supposed to produce? Produce results, number one, worthy of your repentance. Because of the gospel, because of the word of God, because of the goodness of God that the Lord has forgiven us, he has changed you, he has transformed you, what's next for us? then if we are true in our Christianity, if we're true in our relationship with God, there are things that we need to stop doing that is not according to His will. What is that? Are there still, still sin issues? Selfish issues? Secret things? Undealt sin issues in our lives? God wants us to produce results worthy of our repentance. So the Word of God says produce fruit in keeping with repentance. Change or genuine change starts with the gospel. It starts when 
we receive the great salvation. Secondly, producing all kinds of good deeds. Good works. We are saved for good works. And it's not the, the other way around that we do good works in order for us to be saved. No, we are saved on the basis of the mercy and the grace of God. And because of that, because of the goodness and the love of God, now it's my time to extend this love through good works to others. Thirdly, produce results of the same kind of fruit. Same kind of fruit. Whatever Jesus has done in our lives, we are to produce this kind of result. What is this kind of fruit? The internal fruit that Galatians 5, 22 to 23 says, the fruit of the Spirit. We are spiritual beings and God wants us to have that kind of fruit of the spirits of love and joy and peace in the midst of this chaos and goodness and kindness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. God wants to see these fruits in us. And there's what you call external fruit. That's why Jesus says, go and make disciples. We produce our own kind. We go out there, no matter who the person we talk to, whatever religion, whatever background, that person is capable to receive the love of God. There is no hard heart in the eyes of God. God wants to penetrate every heart according to the gospel. And God will use you, whether you like it or not. Is that amazing? That's why spiritual community plays an important part of our destiny. John chapter 15, verse 5 says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, from me, you can do nothing. This is huge. There is no way we can produce this fruit apart from God and His love and His Spirit and what God has in store for us. This discipleship, this spiritual community, relationship. God wanted you to produce this kind of fruit. And we will produce this if we abide with Him. Because there's nothing we can do apart from Christ. God will use the church. It's not the church that will cause us to bear fruit. It's Christ. It's Christ in us. It's the love of God in us. John 15 verse 8 says, By this my, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So prove to be my disciples. God wants you to be fruitful. You exist to produce results. To produce your own kind. To share this kind of love so others, once they receive the gospel and, share, and experience the love of God, that they may also share it with others. Last but not the least, it is through Jesus' name that we can ask the Father of anything. So that whatever you ask, the Father in my name, he may give, he may give it to you. Whatever you ask in my name, it is through me. But God will give everything to us. It's so amazing that, imagine from servant, slave, we become friends. But through this word, what he was saying is, you know, as friends, my father, he can be yours. I'm introducing him to you. Everything that you have comes from my Father. I'm sharing this to you, which means to say he can be your Father as well. But the way you go through him is through my name. And you can ask. Going back to Pastor Jonathan. I can't, go, I can't be going to the Bacobos family, to that house in Caloocan without him. 
but because there was a building of relationship. If I'll see the parents of Pastor Jonathan, even though he would not be around, Mommy Tessie and Daddy would receive me and would know me. Why? Because I went through that family because of him. Certainly, with Christ in us, we can go anytime before God, but we could ask anything of the Father, to the Father, because of Christ. I believe the Lord is speaking to you. God will never put such guilt or condemnation. Everything boils down to Christ himself. In John chapter 14, verse 13 to 14, whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father would not just give, but be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. In conclusion, as he laid this down, he said in verse 17, this things I command you so that you would love one another. The basis of our love to anyone is simply because of what Christ has done when he broke this kind of relationship from slave to friends and us become his family that we, go, we can go to the Father through his Son, Jesus Christ, so that we could love one another. My friends, because we receive Jesus' love and become his friends, now we can go and bear fruit by becoming friends, not just in the church community, but even to the world. God wants to use you. There's a calling of the church to go out, not to stay here, but to go out wherever you are, in your campuses, in your offices, in your community, in your barangay, wherever you step your foot on, that's God's territory. Because God wanted you to bear fruit. He expects us to go out there and share his love. Can we all stand up in our feet right now? I want us to worship the Lord today and express this as, Lord, thank, thank you, Lord, that you chose me and appointed me to go and bear fruit. Lord, may you speak clearly and may, me, may we obey fully to your commandment. Can you do this? You're all I see, I know that 
back here I am oh Lord you can have all your throne laying it all at your feet your grace has set me free so Jesus maybe there's some of you you've struggled you've struggled in receiving his love because someone has failed to love you doesn't mean that you can't receive the love of God there's condemnation there's guilt there's shame and I believe the Lord wants to break that the Lord wants to come in because he has declared this I'm gonna go to the cross because of you and there is no there is no gap there is no wall between my love for you nobody can take this love it's already done and I believe some of you needs to receive his love you need to be convinced that the Lord has forgiven you and you need to get out you need to get out from this relationship from this bad deal from this habit from this struggle you need to get out because Jesus love is enough I want to pray for some of you here I'm not gonna ask you to raise up your hands it's between you and God the Lord wants to minister to you the Lord wants to pour out his amazing love for us Lord I pray for your church I pray for your children but Lord we can declare ourselves your children Lord from servants to friends your child Lord I pray you break that condemnation I pray Lord God even today as we confess our sins Lord you are not just gonna forgive us but cleanse us from all unrighteousness so that we will be pure so that we will be holy it's not on the basis of our strength there's nothing that we can do to change ourselves it's all because of your love and Lord here we are we receive your love today Lord thank you for your forgiveness thank you Lord God that even today we declare ourselves whole because of your love that Lord God your deliverance has come your cleansing has come your healing has come your righteousness has come Lord because of your love for us and therefore Lord it never stops here because we receive your love now we can go and share this love to others now Lord since you chose us we can go and bear fruit and become friends with others Lord I pray may this call be resounded in our hearts in our ears wherever we go there is a purpose for us and that is to share the love of god and be friends towards the lost lord thank you for what you're about to do in jesus name can you all open your eyes you know the purpose or one of the purpose of this messages for us to be connected kasi nagkaroon lang po ng paeng last Sunday what we were supposed to do is to integrate as part of this message that we're gonna take time to fellowship and have a community can you show that there and we're gonna do this next week we're gonna have a new series but short preaching but we're gonna take a moment for food, for fun, and fellowship. 
means to say, we're going to integrate this. Please bring your friends, bring your family. I don't know how it's, it looks like, but we're going to have food, food all over. In fact, some of your victory group, group leaders will bring. You can bring food next week, whatever food you like. Or we could have breakfast. Uh, don't eat breakfast. Let's have the food and fellowship here. Is that okay? Okay, let's move I think that... I think we're supposed to enjoy one another's company. We need to connect. Okay lang po ba yun? So that, I mean, a person says, it's about the relationship. It's about... So, ma'am, short preaching, short service. Am I on camera? Short service. But we want to take time to fellowship around. We're going we're gonna to eat together. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to know together. We want to connect with you. Okay lang ba? Kagaya nung sinabi nung one of you here, sabi niya, I want to share my love. Can I, can, can, can I get to know some of you? Please, let's do that. We want to do that as a church. Is that okay? Next week, please come. Wag baka naman maubos yung oras yung dumating kayo late kasi nag-prepare kayo ng food. Bili na lang kayo, di ba? And if you want, kung walang food, okay lang din. Part po na gagawin natin next week. We're going to have a moment. So, gusto ko lang sabihin na, Kayo pa lang. Okay lang ba? Magbe-break muna tayo sa mga victory groups natin. Pero, kailangan natin mag-connect, eh, di ba? That's what the church is about. We're gonna share the love, hallelujah, through food, fun, and fellowship. Is that cool? Is that alright? So, you can bring whatever food you want, yung specialty dun sa barangay nyo. Okay? So, but ganyan ang tingin mo sa akin, honey. Okay? Parang nag-iisip ka na kung anong dadali natin next week. Isipin na po natin ngayon. It's up to you, alright? But the most important is our connection. Okay lang po ba yan? Is that okay? Please invite your friends, your family para na makita nila kung ano yung victory stanza. Okay lang ba yan, Brother Goods? We're good? Praise God. Alright, let's ra- raise up our hands together. Lord, I thank you for your love. I thank you for this spiritual family. I thank you, Lord God, for what you're about to do. Hindi po kayo, hindi pa ko, hindi pa ho kayo tapos sa buhay namin. And Lord, thank you that you're gonna connect us with friends who would help us, support us. And Lord, we want to enjoy life with you in this spiritual community. Father, we want to give you glory. May we know the resounding call to make friends, to bear fruit to others, especially to those who doesn't, who doesn't know Christ yet. May your will be done. May your kingdom come. In Jesus' name we pray and everyone would say, Amen and Amen. God bless you all. See you next Sunday. And don't forget our community. Bring some food. Amen. All right. God bless you.